Act. Breaking news, the Federal Reserve's annual retreat in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, kicks off tonight. Our Peter Barnes is there. Peter, this is gearing up to be a very important weekend, of course, for the Fed and for the markets, even though Janet Yellen isn't there. That, that's right, Sandra. And we have our first interview this morning uh, right now with Esther George, the president of the Kansas City Federal Reserve Bank and the host of this annual conference. And she is a longtime hawk on Fed policy. She called for starting to raise uh, uh, interest rates to make the first hike since the financial crisis back at the Fed's meeting in July. But when we talked to her uh, yesterday, she says that with problems in China and all the volatility in the financial markets, she wants to wait and see echoing comments by uh, New York Fed President Bill Dudley yesterday. Any time that you get new information in between meetings, um, it can complicate decision making. So certainly you have to look at the changes, the volatility we saw in the market, what new information we may have about China, um, and take that in. The question is whether it fundamentally changes the outlook for the U.S. economy. And does it? And does it for you? And, and if it does, what does that mean for your views on when to lift off? Because you were in favor of acting sooner rather than later. Right. And because I thought the economy was strong enough, I thought the data was moving in the right direction some months ago, um, I felt like the economy could begin, could take the process of normalizing. Uh, given what we've seen recently, I think we just have to wait and see. I don't want to take too much signal from something that could turn out to be noise. Um, I don't want to overreact to short-term data that may not in the long term really turn out to be significant for that kind of a decision. So is September still on the table as far as you're concerned? Well, every meeting is on the table yeah. as far as I'm concerned, and I think the committee has been clear that that's its intention. So where do you think the economy stands right now? What, what is your forecast for this year, next year? So after a, a disappointing first quarter, it looks like we're back on track. We'll probably do another 2% uh, growth. The labor markets um, continue to show great health, I think. Uh, we've had over 200,000 jobs per month for 15 of the last 17 months. That is a great sign, I think. And so as consumers spend, as they gain more confidence, as low oil prices feed through to them, uh, my outlook is for continued growth. And I think in that context, um, it's time for us to talk about normalization. But the other component of this is inflation. And yes. you and your colleagues would like at least some reasonable assurance that inflation is, going, is headed back to the 2% target that you've set. Uh, but right now, <laughs> inflation, headline inflation, is still very, very weak. Uh, what about that? Well, when you look at why, when you look at the disinflationary pressure, so we've got uh, an oil price shock that is reflected in that data. We have low import prices because of a strong dollar. Uh, those should be temporary effects and I think not pull us off a longer term forecast. So as long as expectations look like they're staying stable, as long as that's not feeding through uh, to the broader economy, then I think we can have, I have reasonable confidence uh, that we'll get back to that target. So, so you would want to see that and, and the jobs picture looks pretty so, uh, solid enough? Uh, for you, if you were voting this September, and you're and you're not a voting member of the uh, policy uh, body of the FOMC this year, but you will be next year, um, what would it take to get you to vote to raise rates in September? Well, I'm, as I said, I was there several months ago, and in, in terms of thinking, it's time. I think the committee wants to be able to, once it lifts off, go on a gradual path. And that's also why I was in favor of doing that sooner, so that it would give the economy time to react to that rate increase so that we could see uh, the effects of that and then proceed um, on a gradual normalization path. And when, and when you did talk about this in July in your speech, uh, in a speech in Oklahoma, you did talk about the risks of waiting too long mm -hmm. to start to raise rates. Mm -hmm. Is what we're seeing now with this volatility and, and, and the issues with perhaps some of these overseas economy, uh, is, is this some, some, is this, were these some of the things that you were worried about? Uh, were you, the stock market getting ahead of itself and mm -hmm. things like that? You warned about that. Well, when rates are this low, 
for a long period of time, you create certain incentives. And there can be mispricing of risk. There is certainly a desire to reach for yield. And if you think about the kind of accommodation, the quantitative easing was focused on asset values at the time. And so as we've seen housing values recover and a stock market uh, that has grown, once you begin to talk about raising rates, you might expect volatility of some kind. So my objective is to think about the long run sustainability of this growth. And so right now you're on board with uh, data dependency. Wait for the data uh, b before you, you uh, move on rates. Uh, and if that means waiting until meetings later this year, October, potentially December, wait for the data? Well, the committee has indicated they're going to wait for the data. Um, my own view is we've seen data that suggests the economy is strong enough uh, to act. So we'll see what happens by uh, the September meeting, uh, what things we've seen this week, how that plays out, um, if it's clearer at all to what it means for the broader economy. We'll have another jobs report. Uh, next week? Next week. Uh, so, Senator, what is significant here is you have one of the Fed's toughest hawks uh, now sounding a little bit like one of the moderate doves, Bill Dudley of the New York Fed. And if we see more of the Fed officials uh, speaking here, doing interviews with us uh, tomorrow uh, and with other places, start to coalesce around this kind, this new analysis of the impact of, of China and volatile markets potentially on the U.S. economy, uh, you could see them talking about delaying the first uh, rate hike uh, in, in rates until later in the year. Sandra? And also interesting to hear her takes on the impact of the lower oil prices and the higher U.S. dollar. Great stuff. Peter Barnes, thank you for joining us so bright and early. <laughs> okay, Not Sandra, exactly thanks. bright where you are, though. Thanks, yeah, Peter. Coffee time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Coming